First open back in 1975. There's a look inside the iconic Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Atlanta Falcons. On first and ten, here's Breeze. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Call it a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make it second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. <laughs> A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. Falcons coming back out here onto the field. This has been a team that's had an interesting season. The rough start, then they picked it up some. As you look in your crystal ball going forward down the stretch, what do you see for the Falcons? Well, I think on the surface, you would think the injuries are just too much to overcome on the defensive side of the ball. But the way they've been playing recently, they put everything on the offense and just asking the defense to do just enough. And the offense is really giving them great play because Matt Ryan can throw to Julio Jones, Mohamed Sanu, the rookie Calvin Ridley, Tevin Coleman and Edo Smith running it and catching it. They're starting to put up points in big numbers and making people chase them each and every game. And they may want to start to pad some wins now because three of their last four in the regular season are on the road, including trips to Green Bay and Carolina. Now a play fake here on first down. This one complete to Mohamed Sanu. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. That goes for a gain of 31. Now they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And that's incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Here's Coleman, a spin. Down to about the 22 here. Call it seven yards on the carry, so a pretty good game, but still left with a tough third and eight. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. 
Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. On third down, Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Now Giorgio Tavecchio for the field goal try. From the left hash, this from 39. Tavecchio puts this one through, and the Falcons are out to a 3-0 advantage. So the opening drive stalls out, but the field goal does get them the first points of the night. And three points not to be underestimated. How about this, right? You're on the road, you're under the lights, national television audience, this is not a dress rehearsal, partner. This is for real and a pretty nice opening statement. Here's Bosher to kick it away. The dangerous Hill now to return. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down. At about the 23-yard line. The football going back over to the New Orleans Saints uh, and a team this year, Charles, that really took off after that week one loss. For me, it all came together week nine. You think back to that game when they beat the Rams, knocked yeah. off their undefeated streak to start the regular season. So now, are the Saints really Super Bowl winning contenders? I mean, do you put them in that category? Oh, I certainly do. And I think people were wondering how they would respond this season after what happened to end last season, the Minneapolis miracle, where they ended up giving up the touchdown pass in the last play of the game in the playoffs. And when it started losing at home to Tampa Bay, many wondered if their psyche had really been affected, but they've regrouped since then. The defense is really playing well. And then there's always Drew Brees to Mike Thomas. And that has worked very well for them. Well, since you mentioned Michael Thomas, and we talked about that win over the Rams, <laughs> never forget, going to get the flip phone, Mr. Michael Thomas, channeling his inner Joe Horn from back in the day. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. A lot of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Breeze now on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Now Breeze throwing on second down. He's going to launch this thing way down. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. They give him a gain of 38. Usually hitting a deep post pattern, as we just saw there for a big gainer, that's tough to do because you usually have a safety or two in the middle of the field. But if you hit enough crossers and underneath routes and curls, Start to get those guys creeping up, wanting to make plays on the football. It's the equivalent of a changeup in baseball. You show your other stuff, throw the changeup, and on that play, it worked for big yardage. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Marshall, the lone receiver on the left side. To throw is Breeze. This will be caught at about the five. No gain there on the completion. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. 
They come out here in the eye. They'll look to run with Ingram. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It's a loss of two, now third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Breeze now on third and goal. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And what's his kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Now Hardy on the return. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. And the drive starts with a handoff to Coleman. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Coleman now. He finds an opening past the 40. And down to the 28-yard line. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 46 yards. And you talk about great blocking up front. I don't think he was even touched, not a finger on him, until he was brought down to the ground. I think we heard the whoosh as he went by, didn't we? Right through the gap. No one there, as you outlined, no one touched him at all. A free sprint into the secondary. Yeah, that's what you call breaking free right there. Off the play fake. Here's Ryan. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Okafor in there to sack him for a loss of six. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. From the gun, it's Ryan. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 23 yards on the play. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. This is Coleman, and they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs, but the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Now Ryan on second down. That's complete, right around the eight. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. 
Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off. Deep. This is caught. It's Sanu this time for a Falcon touchdown. Mohamed Sanu, a five-yard touchdown. And the Falcons are in for six. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point <laughs> kicker. Exactly. He put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Wide open receiver complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Ready. 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 Now a first down carry, it's Kamara. And he's gonna fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And they give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. On second down, here's Breeze. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Well, nothing takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Here we go, here we go. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. They're in the midst of a nice drive, but facing a third and long here. From the gun, it's Breeze. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A really nice gain of 25 yards. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Ready? Ready? On first down, Breeze. And Thomas has it. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Bree's going to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. 
The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Ready, yellow lady. Breeze leaves this one with Kamara, and he'll fight his way down right around the 12. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. The Saints on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. Shotgun now for Breeze. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Michael Thomas, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time. Lux with the extra point, and we are even at 10 apiece. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives. So a very good flow right now offensively. Hard to slow them down, too, because they are locked in. Feel like the offense coordinator is a little bit ahead of the defensive guys right now. They're beating them to the punch with their play calls. They've got a nice rhythm they're locked into. How can the defensive guys come up with something that will disrupt that flow? That's what they're seeking right now. Well, it's been an exciting sequence to watch. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Coleman. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Von Bell up to make the tackle. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the shotgun, Ryan. He's got Sanu. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Ryan to Sanu, good for an Atlanta first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Here's Ryan. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. I know that's their first connection in this game, but you and I both know that Julio Jones is without a doubt his quarterback's favorite target. Oh, yeah, Matt Ryan loves this guy. Who wouldn't? Yeah, and the reason that he's that is because of his dependability. And quarterbacks have to have that from their receivers, meaning... They know where they're going to be when they're running certain routes. They don't break them on them. They don't change them up and do their own freelance stuff and put their quarterbacks in bad situations. Matt Ryan has ultimate trust in Julio Jones. It's a linebacker, Manti Teo, on the stop. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. 
Edo Smith, his first carry. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And they're going to have a third down. Ryan throwing for his running back and he's got him complete and he'll go down here at the 35 yard line six yards on the pickup and that's going to make it fourth down instead of throwing it downfield Charles they just tried to dump it underneath there do you like the call I do I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down in this case it didn't happen And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Here's Bosher to kick it away. To return it, Alvin Kamara spins past it. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Lady, yellow lady, yellow lady. On second down, Ingram. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Ready. You ready? Now Breeze on third down. And that's complete. It's Watson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A very solid gain of 27. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What did the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Breeze now to throw. Wide open. It's Marshall complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Now a handoff. Here's Camara. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game, but when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. Here's Breeze to throw. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. 
You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. The Saints on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 11. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. The open man is Smith. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes, and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. They'll give it to him up the middle. And that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. Throwing now is Breeze. And he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. In for the score. And the Saints are able to cash in for six. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Looks good on the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. Lutz now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. A gain of 32 that time. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make the play on the football. First down. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They'll give him eight on the play, and that'll bring up second down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. On second down, here's Ryan. That is incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree 
as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Falcons on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. Again, Ryan. And that is incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. So now the field goal unit trots out their time tonight. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice and ambitious effort, but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and ten. Ready? We waiting? Now Breeze. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And the former first pick of the second round of the 2001 draft doing his thing. And the beauty of watching him play is progressions. Yeah, he can throw it deep, but how about his ability to hit secondary targets, underneath targets, and hits them with accuracy? Breeze now on first down. And that is incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target. And now it's second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Ready. We're waiting. Now Breeze. He hits his target, left side, Watson. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. The Saints on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This will be third and five. Ready, you waiting? Return. Again, it's Breeze. Throwing the comeback route. He's got the hook up to Thomas. And now before this first down play, we're gonna get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. and 10 here's breeze and his throw is going to be incomplete you get a tight end like this and you know he's used to dishing out punishment but here he's the one that has to absorb the contact and as a result unable to hold on to the football line of scrimmage again the 25 second and 10 now breeze maybe a free play over the middle to Smith. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. So with the completed pass and the yardage they got, they'll decline the penalty. 
So obviously more yards on the pass completion than they would have gained with the penalty. They did the math, they did it well, and it works for them. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. On the check down, he finds Kamara. A great move in there, but it only takes him to the seven. He's dropped there. Give him eight on the play, and it'll be a second down. But it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. to throw again. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. The final shot before half for Breeze. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Drew Brees does it again. Three first-half touchdown passes for him now. And the Saints add on to their lead. So it's halftime here in New Orleans with the Saints out in front. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. This is fielded at the goal line. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Ryan now off the bootleg. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to bring up a third down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Now it's Ryan. Connects with Sanu right side. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. He had their lone TD earlier. Now he's got a first down. Ryan now 12 of 16 thus far. It's first and 10. Off the bootleg. Ryan. To the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. Ryan will throw again. And he 
he's got the rookie from Alabama, Calvin Ridley. First catch there for the rookie Ridley, and it's a first down. Continuing to steadily move the ball down the field. Not big play after big play, but these moderate gains getting them first downs. And you know what they add up to, right? If you continue that pace and you continue to move it downfield, they add up into six points. That's exactly what you're looking for. Now Ryan on first down. And his pass incomplete. Coverage there by Von Bell. You know, Charles, it is hard to believe that we are sitting on the doorstep of Thanksgiving week. Already that time of year, but it always gives us good football. One of the games on Thanksgiving, Chicago and Detroit, that'll get the party started at 1230 Eastern. One of the traditional games, Detroit hosting, Dallas hosting, but in this case, we will stay in the Motor City. And this is the longest running annual series in the NFL. A lot of people think about Detroit and Green Bay or Chicago and Green Bay. It's Detroit and Chicago. They've met at least once a year since 1930, 178 times total. And they just met two weeks ago in Chicago and going to do it again. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On third down, Ryan looking middle, and that's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. First target, first catch, and a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Ryan now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get three down of the 34-yard line. What's the old expression, three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Now Ryan on second down toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Austin Hooper, the tight end, was the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They run the play fake to Coleman. Now Ryan. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Sheldon Rankins coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it'll be fourth down. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Here's Matt Bosher now. As he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Hey, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. They'll try to get the ground game going with Ingram. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Ready. Yellow lady. They stay on the ground. This time it's Kamara. Vic Beasley able to make the tackle. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. The Saints on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and ten. Ready. We're waiting. Shotgun now for Breeze. And that's complete. It's Watson. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Ready? We waiting? They'll run it now out of the gun. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Ready. Ready. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and ten. Ready. On first down, Breeze. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. He's having a nice game through the air. His decision-making's been really good, solid there again. Just seeing nothing downfield goes underneath. Nice game. How about the patience? Because when you're having a big game through the air, you're looking for those chunk plays, those big ones downfield. Instead, as you noted, takes the check down, dumps it off, gains good yardage anyway. Really well executed. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Alvin Kamara really settling into the league in his second season. And, of course, he came out of Tennessee, but not a lot of people remember he started at Alabama. He did and got caught in that big mix of running backs at Bama. And they like those bigger, thicker runners, those guys that can break down defenses through the middle. Alvin Kamara ended up leaving Alabama, going to a junior college for a while. I believe he went to Hutchinson, Hutchinson. Junior College before matriculating at Tennessee and finding his way to the NFL, where he is now a star. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet man because of the coverage. It was way too tight, unable to find anyone open. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Ready, you waiting, you Back to the air on second down, it's Breeze. Boy State, but now he's swallowed up and taken down. Vic Beasley in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. And he's going to go down again. Grady Jarrett, he's the one to get him this time. And back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. Well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. And here now come the Falcons. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now, first and 10 at their own 18. They'll start out on the ground with Coleman. Give him three on first down. 
It'll set up a second and seven. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. play fake. Here's Ryan. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. A.J. Klein coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. So the sack pushes him back and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. From the gun, it's Ryan. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. But no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Throwing on first down is Breeze. Over the middle, and it's caught. Brandon Marshall. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Breeze now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and 10. A 10th carry for Kamara. Look at the spin. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now Breeze. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Four touchdown passes now for Drew Brees. And the Saints now add six to their lead. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Lutz now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Here's Ryan. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make it a second down. 
Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can yeah. they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From the shotgun, Ryan going underneath. It's Coleman. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good gain. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Ryan now to throw on third down. And it's complete. Hooper. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet. Not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. From midfield now, here's Ryan. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. You get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no, no yardage. Yards. Okay. Again, Ryan. And his throw is incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. The Falcons on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll make it a second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Following the delay, here's second and nine. Throwing again, Ryan. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. third down Ryan and he's got a man Calvin Ridley and they'll work it inside the 15 yard line before it's all said and done 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling it's another first down 
And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Ready. Ready. Five, three, five, so the offense a little antsy. The flag comes out and a five-yard penalty. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. To throw again is Ryan. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Logan Paulson from 19 yards away. And the Falcons cut into that lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. Tavecchio good on the extra point, and that will get him one closer. Here's Bosher to kick it away. Kamara now to return. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Breeze hey. now on first down. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. A give. This is Kamara. And they'll give it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Ready. We're waiting. On second down, here's Breeze. And that's complete to the right side. It's Marshall. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Falcons grab it. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. 
Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sideline? Do you see the coaches signaling all the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game? They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Connects with Sanu right side. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He was hoping to get that one to Tevin Coleman in space, and it's third and short. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Ryan will throw again. And this is caught at the eight. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the seven. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now a play fake here on first down. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Only a yard in the completion. It's second and goal. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Ryan. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Marcus Williams. And he returns it here to his own 18-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, and just, they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Ready for 90. On the ground, Kamara. <laughs> finding some room at midfield. And down to the 19-yard line. A big play there out of Kamara. 45 yards. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Ready. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. 10 more there and another first down. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Here's Breeze to throw. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. 
He'll get it up the middle. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Ready. 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 They'll run it with Kamara. And he takes it across and into the end zone. Touchdown, Saints. A great effort there. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Saints add on to their lead. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. Lutz with the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. Lutz now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Atlanta now coming out on the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something some <laughs> other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Now Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. And give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On first down, Ryan. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. On second down, here's Ryan. Bust through the tackle. And that's off the mark, incomplete. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. And it's third and short. I'd love to know what he's saying in the huddle now to his guys up front because it's been a steady stream of pressure on him this entire game. That time, able to avoid the sack, but he's got to talk to his offensive line and say, guys, just a couple seconds extra, please. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Here's Ryan. And this is going to be incomplete. Coverage there by Von Bell. Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run it with Coleman. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. On first and ten, it's Ryan. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. I think someone's going to get into QB1's ear when he gets to the sideline. Already thrown an interception. That one should have been picked. 
Look, let's just be honest about it. That'd be the second person in his ear because he's hearing it in the huddle right now. Not the start to the game he wanted. Like you said, the pick on the opening drive, second drive, not much better. So the false start will back them up five. And that'll set them back five. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. From the gun, it's Ryan. Incomplete. They were looking that time to get it to Justin Hardy, and it's third down. My man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, it really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. From the shotgun, Ryan. This is brought in by Hardy. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. 23 yards on the play. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Ready. Now flags come flying in. One of the Falcons moved early. That's going to set him back five yards. So after the penalty, heading in the wrong direction, second and 15. Operating from the gun, Ryan throwing the out route incomplete. It's Jones. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Julio Jones. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Falcons get a bit closer. To Vecchio to add the PAT. Extra point up and good by Tavecchio. And that will shave one more off this lead. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Ready. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. And the Falcons going to use another timeout. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. Only one timeout defensively, so this should just be a simple kneel down. I agree totally. I looked at my time management chart. It says take a knee, victory formation. They just have one timeout left, and that should be all, all she wrote. By the way, it's a good thing you can read that because nobody else can. <laughs> not with my chicken scratch, not at all. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock.
So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Drew Brees with a kneel down, and that ought to do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Saints are winners.